Hello and welcome to another recap video here on the Giant Take YouTube channel. Day six of training camp, first day of full pads. It was a very exciting one, and we're going to get into all of it right now. Uh, we had Jarnay Holmes, the first player on the field today, once again, followed by Ben Bredesen once again. Uh, those guys seem to like getting out there early on the practice field and getting some work in before everyone else comes out. Um, and then, Alex, I'm going to go to you now because we have the starting lineups, and they now seem to be solidified uh, with JMS under center. That is now his third straight practice there, uh, and a couple other guys wherever they are slotted to look like the pairings or the the, the guys, the 11 players uh, that are starting for the New York Giants as of now. So I'll let you go to the starting lineups. Yeah, only one change in total uh, since last practice. Um, yesterday, which is, I believe, the least amount of changes. We have been seeing at least two changes uh, per per day uh, for the starting lineup, but only one change, and that's on offense, and I'll get there in a second. Uh, offense was Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, Andrew Thomas, the one change, Josh Zudu coming in to start at left guard, uh, JMS, Glowinski, Neal, Waller, Slayton, Campbell, and Hodgins, and then on defense, uh, Lawrence, Williams, Thibodeau, Ojolari, Okereke, Beavers, Jackson, Flott, Banks, Pinnock, and McKinney, uh, the same defense as yesterday. So uh, uh, constant defense there, and uh, they definitely uh, seemed a little bit more in sync today as well. A lot of uh, Trey Hawkins' first-team reps as well, though, to keep in mind. So uh, Hawkins got some first-team reps. McFadden got first-team reps. We saw Hyatt get first-team reps. So uh, just because you know these are the starting lineups doesn't mean these are the only players getting first-team reps. Just want to reiterate that. So we had one-on-ones today, wide receivers versus cornerbacks, offensive linemen versus defensive linemen. Alex was able to watch the offensive linemen, defensive linemen. I was able to watch the wide receiver cornerbacks. So we're each going to talk about our specific, uh, uh, I guess, um, oh my gosh, study of players that we watch. You could say that. First of all, with the wide receivers, cornerbacks, Trey Hawkins did well in one-on-ones with his tight coverage and also had a couple knockdowns. He also forced an incompletion in 11-on-11 drills against Jalen Hyatt, which I'll try and see if I can find our clip and put it in here. However, some of our Twitter community members, and I'd like to shout them out and say thank you for supporting us throughout this time at training camp, did point out that uh, they were saying a couple pass interferences or uh, DPI. You know, a lot of a lot of people on Twitter were saying them. They were like, Hawkins won't be able to get away with that in an NFL play. I did rewatch it after seeing all those comments. It is a little handsy. You know, he does play a very handsy defense on his wide receivers. However, the wide receivers didn't seem to mind that. Maybe it's just the physicality of one-on-ones and how it pertains to a little bit differently because you're the only two players on the field at that point besides the quarterback throwing it to you. Um, so I guess you kind of, you have to be the judge if you think that's CPI or not. Personally, I think that's just guys being competitive. Uh, so I didn't seem to mind. Other stuff when it comes to wide receiver cornerbacks, uh, nothing much really. I mean, it was Nick McLeod and Colin Johnson that I had a play to watch as well. Uh, but, you know, there are some oohs and ahs here and there, but uh, here and there. But it was Trey Hawkins that was the big name. And again, another day, another practice where he is the name that they're talking about. Uh, and this this Trey Hawkins train, whatever you want to call it, this, this ride to glory, uh, this blossoming of a second or third string player or third team player, second team player, um, needs to be taken seriously. And the Giants coaching staff are taking it seriously. Uh, they're putting them in their starting lineups in their first team and getting a lot of first team reps. So we'll have to see how he plays against actual uh, offenses of other teams in preseason. But definitely Trey Hawkins isn't just a name to you know write down your tweets or your notepad during training camp. This guy is going to get reps for this Giants team throughout uh, – preseason so that's something to know anyway i've been talking about trey hawkins too long alex o-line d-line go ahead yeah the o-line d-line uh there was not that many reps of it hopefully we'll get more on thursday um from the reps we did see evan neal definitely did struggle uh, he got beaten in the two reps he was in every player pretty much had two reps i think there thereabouts uh, but you did see an improvement on his first step or his initial quickness his initial step uh, which i think was something that a lot of people were saying last season was pretty slow that it seemed like he wasn't able to get off quick enough. Um, and now it seemed pretty fluid, uh, in terms of the reps that we saw those couple reps, uh, you know, it's obviously difficult to tell in 11 on 11s cause there's so much going on. Right. But when you have these one-on-ones, you can really kind of focus on the two players that are in that situation. And, uh, Evan Neal 
that is a, a, a good sign for him. Obviously, still some concerns. Uh, but, you know, I'd say this is a mixed day for Evan Neal. He definitely lost his reps, but uh, there was definitely improvement as well. And then Andrew Thomas didn't matter whether he was going against Ojolari or Thibodeau. He was winning uh, and he was winning easily. It looked like it was like he was playing with toddlers and uh, Andrew Thomas, even after the big contract, uh, it seems like is just not, you know, not stopping. He's still going to be an elite tackle in the NFL. And um, it looks like he's only going to get better from here. It's just every single day he looks better and better. Uh, so, so that's something to note. Those are the two players. Obviously, most people are going to be talking about uh, from O-line, D-line. John Michael Schmitz had a rep against Dexter Lawrence, which uh, he definitely struggled with. But then again, who doesn't struggle uh, against Dexter Lawrence, especially in a one-on-one -on -one situation? That's just not fair for anybody, no matter uh, if you're Jason Kelsey, a probably Hall of Fame center uh, or a undrafted rookie center coming into the league. I don't think anyone has an easy time against Dexter Lawrence. Wake Martindale definitely dialed up the blitz a lot more today in training camp like we saw a lot last year's training camp. The QBs, they had trouble with it, and there's an increase in sacks, quote-unquote. Uh, the sack count tremendously went up. Now, how do sacks work when there's no actual sacking of quarterbacks? Basically, the defense gets into the backfield. They're just standing there, and the quarterback still releases it, whether it's out of bounds or to a receiver. But the defense is standing in the backfield for probably two or three seconds, and you're like, okay, that was a sack. It was a clear and obvious sack. Uh, so that did change Daniel Jones' stat line to be a little bit more middle of the pack, um, you know, to lower end type of day for him, going six for 11 in his toughest day yet. And two to three sacks were, two to three, again, quote unquote, sacks were on Jones himself. Tyrod Taylor also scrambled out through a, pass, a few passes, excuse me, out of bounds. Um, but yeah, Wake Martindale definitely dialing up the uh, the blitz in the first day of uh, full pads. You also saw getting a little chippy out there, kind of like I talked about in my expectations in our TikTok video. I said, is it going to get a little chippy, get a little bit more aggressive? We definitely saw that in the wide receiver cornerback one-on-ones. And also in a specific play where Saquon Barkley got handed the ball, ran downfield, and basically pushed into someone that wasn't even necessary because the play was over. You know, they're not going to tackle Saquon. He's just kind of running aimlessly. There was someone in front of him. I don't remember exactly who it was. It was definitely a safety. Uh, and he kind of just pushes into him. And I was like, is that going to start a fight? What's going to happen? You look for a few seconds and it all uh, it all winds down and ends up not being anything. And they move to the next play. But a little bit chippier, uh, if that's even a word. A little bit more chippy. I don't know. Alex, any final thoughts? Yeah, I mean, Daniel Jones definitely had a tougher day because of what you just said. He went 6 for 11 and 11 on 11 drills. Uh, he had, I guess, two or three sacks, quote unquote, uh, that, you know, that would have been sacks, let's just say in a real game. So uh, definitely a tougher day for Jones, a tougher day for the offense. And uh, I think today was uh, kind of a, um, I don't know, I'm about to use a Star Wars reference, an Empire Strikes Back um, day for the defense. So there you go. Uh, love a little Star Wars. There is the geek knowledge coming out of the man himself. And uh, Star Wars is not geek, all right? It's not geek. I'm clearing that up. What, nerd? What do you want me to call you there? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm going to think of something. Not not any of those two. Enthusiast. Um, there you go. Star Wars enthusiast. There you go. The enthusiast -nist of Alex coming out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching <laughs> this day six, the word. <laughs> day six recap of the training camp. Um, Alex will be going on Thursday. And I will be joining him for the recap video. Uh, he'll be leading the way there and carrying me through that one. But thanks so much for watching uh, this video. Hit that subscribe button down below. Go, I always forget, that way. Follow us on Twitter, the Giant Take Pod, and TikTok for live updates. Mostly Twitter. That's where we get uh, a lot of our stuff in there. And thanks so much for supporting us this way. Also, drop in the comments what you thought of the day. Okay. We'll see you next time. I'll end it now. Peace.